Adaptive subdivision is awesome. It subdivides the geometry based upon its location to the camera. So the parts that are closer to the camera will be subdivided more than the parts that are further away. And by using micro polygon displacement which is a feature which uses adaptive subdivision to displace the geometry in the renders, you can achieve incredible details. But if you are using geometry nodes to instance something on the same object on which you are using micro polygon displacement, then it creates a pretty big problem. But before we talk about that problem, let me show you how you can use micro polygon displacement in case you didn't know how to do that. So here I am in Blender and I'm gonna just add a simple plane and I'm gonna scale it up to maybe 5 times and make sure to apply the scale so I'm gonna press ctrl A and I'm gonna apply the scale so now let's give this plane a material so I'm gonna go to the shading tab and here I also have a camera so I'm gonna give this a new material and I'm gonna call that ground you can call that whatever you want and now I'm gonna select the principal BSDF and I'm gonna hit ctrl shift and T and this only works if you have enabled the node wrangler add-on from the preferences so make sure that you have enabled that so i'm gonna hit ctrl shift and t and now we can select multiple textures and it creates a principal texture setup from that so i'm gonna search for a ground texture and if you want to follow along then you can use the same texture that i'm using by following the link down in the description So I'm going to select this base color texture, this normal texture, this glossy texture and also this displacement texture. And now I'm going to click on this button. And now you can see that it creates a principal texture setup. And now you can see the material but you can see that it isn't displacing at all. So in order to displace this plane using micro polygon displacement, we first need to set up a few things. So in the material properties down in the settings, the displacement is set to bump only, which acts like a bump map, but we have to change that to displacement and bump. So now our plane will have displacement, but you can see that it's not displacing at all. And the reason for that is we only have four vertices. So let us add a subsurface modifier. So I'm gonna go to the modifier properties and I'm going to add a subdivision surface modifier. And you can see that it also rounds off the plane but we don't want that. So I'm going to switch the mode to simple. So now let us increase the subdivision level. So here's the problem. When we subdivide this plane, it subdivides the whole geometry at the same level. So it's going to have the same amount of detail everywhere. But we don't need the same amount of detail everywhere because the parts that are far away from the camera don't need that much detail. So we want the adaptive subdivision. But you can't see any adaptive subdivision option here. So in order to get the adaptive subdivision, you have to go to the render properties and you have to change the feature set from supported to experimental. And now in the subdivision surface modifier, you can see this adaptive subdivision checkbox. So let us turn this on. And when we do that, you notice that the render level is gone and we have a dicing scale. So by using this dicing scale, we can control the amount of detail here. So by using this dicing scale, we can control the amount of subdivisions on this plane. So when we increase the dicing scale, there will be less number of subdivisions. And when we decrease this, there will be more number of subdivisions. And the levels we put doesn't really matter. So we can set that to zero. And it's actually not looking good. And that's because it's not updated. So to update the geometry, you can press tab to go into edit mode and then you can press tab again to go out of it. So the strength of the displacement is so high. So I'm going to decrease it from the displacement node. So we can decrease the strength from the displacement node. And now you can see that it is displacing our plane in the render and it is looking pretty good. And one thing to keep in mind though, 
is that the amount of detail in the render will be much higher and you can see that the final scale is set to 1 pixel and the viewport is 8 pixels. So even when we have set this Dyson scale to 1 in the viewport it's showing us 8 pixels. So if you want to see the actual amount of detail you can go to the render properties and in the subdivision, you can see that for the render, the dicing scale is set to 1, but for the viewport, it is set to 8 pixels. So, if you want to see how it will look in the final render, you can change the viewport to 1 pixel. And you can see that it has a lot of details. So, I'm going to set it back to 8 pixels so that my PC doesn't blow up. So that's how easy it is to use micro polygon displacement. But the problem occurs when you are also using geometry nodes to instance something on the same object on which you are using micro polygon displacement. So when you are using geometry nodes to instance something like say grass, then those grass models will also be subdivided and that's not great because blender will crash and your PC will blow up. So you would say that just move the subdivision modifier before the geometry nodes modifier. But if you do that, then the adaptive subdivision feature will be gone. But we do want adaptive subdivision and micro polygon displacement on this plane and also the grass on this plane. So the solution to that would be to use micro polygon displacement on this object, but for the instancing use a different object. So let us see how we can do that. So for that, I'm going to go to the Geometry Nodes workspace. And for the instancing, I'm going to add a simple plane. And now let us create a new Geometry Nodes tree. And I'm going to call this instancing. And we don't need this spreadsheet editor, so I'm going to collapse that. And now we want to use this object to instance something but on this plane. So I'm going to delete this group input node and when we do that our plane will be gone because we don't have anything to output. And now I'm going to drag and drop this first plane into the geometry nodes tree. And now I'm going to plug this to the group output node. And now we have the exact replica of that plane. So now I'm going to use this one for the instancing. By the way, if you want to learn instancing in detail, then you can watch my tutorial by clicking the i button or by following the link down in the description. So now I'm going to add a distribute points on faces node to distribute points on this plane. And I'm going to decrease down the density a bit to something like this. And I'm going to add an instance on points node and for the sake of this tutorial I'm gonna just use a simple cube and I'm gonna use this as the instance and these are huge so I'm gonna scale this down to something like this and now we have that plane but we are using a different object to instance something on that plane and when we move this plane, you can see that those instances aren't following this plane. So to fix that, what you have to do is you have to set this from original to relative. And now when we move this plane, those instances will follow this plane. And now I'm going to go to the shading tab. And now you can see that it is working. Our plane is having micro polygon displacement, but these cubes are not. So to demonstrate how this works, I just used a simple cube, but you can use whatever you want like grass. But you might think that what's the point of this? What's the point? We are using micro polygon displacement for details on this ground and then we are instancing grass on this ground. So when we are instancing grass on the ground, then the details of the ground won't be visible at all because of the grass, right? And Yes, in that situation you are right, but in a lot of cases you do need instances on that object and also micro polygon displacement on that. Like if you are creating a path, then you need micro polygon displacement for the details, but you want the grass to be on the ground. So in that case it's helpful. 
So if you wanna know how to create procedural pathway generator in Blender, then you can watch that video by clicking the i button or by following the link down in the description. But if you are using another object to instance something on an object using a weight paint or an attribute, then you need to do an extra step. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. So for that, I'm gonna use my procedural pathway generator project files so you can create your own by following the tutorials that i've created or if you don't want to create it by yourself then you can buy the project files from my Gumroad for only five bucks so now here is my procedural pathway generator blend file and now let us see how we can use a different object to scatter something on this ground and also we don't want that to be on this path so for instancing we want to use a different object and it doesn't matter what that object is so i'm gonna just use a simple plane for that and i'm gonna create a new geometry nodes tree and i'm gonna rename that to instancing because why not and now i'm gonna delete this group input node and i'm gonna drag and drop this plane into the geometry nodes tree and now let us output this to the group output node and also change this to relative and now i'm gonna use a distribute points on faces node to distribute points on this plane and i'm going to decrease down the density a bit to something like this and i'm going to add an instance on points node and i'm going to just use the simple cube for the sake of this tutorial and these are huge so i'm going to scale these down to something like this or maybe I'll increase the density a bit. And let me turn on the cavity so you can see it better. And now the cubes are everywhere on this plane, but we don't want them to be on this path. So for that, I'm gonna add the group input node that I deleted. Then I'm gonna connect this density to the group input node. And now we can control that value from the geometry nodes modifier. And now I'm gonna add a math node and I'm going to connect that here and I'm going to change it to multiply and now I'm going to plug this input into the group input node and now we can click on this button and now we can choose an attribute for that and I want to use the path attribute that I created so now I'm going to select this plane and now you can click on this drop down arrow to see all the attributes that we are outputting and here is the path attribute so you can hover the mouse over that and press ctrl c to copy it and now i'm going to select the plane that we were using for instancing from the outliner because we can't see it and now here i can move the mouse over that and press ctrl v to paste it is that possible yes it is and now you can see the effect working but it's the opposite of what we wanted so now we can just add a color ramp here and now flip the color ramp and you can also play with these handles if you want to so that's how you can use a different object for instancing something on any object so that's it for this video guys i hope you find it helpful if you did please give it a thumbs up so more people can find it and subscribe to the channel so you won't miss any of my new videos. And if you wanna learn geometry notes then you can watch my previous videos. I'll be back.